Merry Christmas, everybody. I hope that you got your Christmas shopping done, and I hope that you're having a wonderful Christmas season. My name is Pastor Dan, and I'm one of the pastors on staff at Abundant Life Church. And I just want to invite each and every one of you to our Christmas Eve service. It's going to be on Christmas Eve. You got it. It's going to be at 6 p.m. We're going to be in person and also live streaming on our Facebook page. There's going to be Christmas trivia. There's going to be a kid's story. There's going to be live music. And there's going to be a great inspirational message as well. So please, we'd love for you and your family to join us either in person or live on our Facebook page. I remember the day that our family got a, a TV with a remote control. Oh, we were so excited. No longer did we have to get up and turn the TV on. We could just use this magical clicker. But my dad quickly became the one that held on to that control controller. The keeper of the controller. Who, who in your family is the keeper of the remote control? I remember there would even be times that I would try to sneak in and grab the remote control and I would get the death stare from my dad. So I remember sitting on the couch as my dad is choosing what we watch. I would watch car races and westerns and curling. I would even sit there and watch it, the Parliament Channel. Today in our story, we're going to be looking at a guy named Herod. And he had trouble with control. Herod is kind of seen as the villain of the nativity story. At this point in, the, in his reign, three of his sons, two of his wives, and his mother-in-law, he said executed because he felt they were a threat to his ruling as the king. Herod wasn't willing to share the spotlight with anyone not even if it was going to be the savior of the world. And now, right now, let's look at the, the passage in Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 7, and also verses 16 to 18. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from the eastern land arrived in Jerusalem, asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We have seen his star as it arose, and we have come to worship him. Herod was deeply disturbed by, the, by their question, as was all of Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of the religious law. Where did the prophets say the Messiah would be born? He asked them. In Bethlehem, they said. For this is what the prophet wrote. O Bethlehem of Judea, you are not just a lowly village in Judea, for a ruler will come for you, who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod sent a private message to the wise men, asking them to come and see him. At this meeting, they learned the exact time when, when, the, when they first saw the star. Herod was furious when he learned that the wise men had outwitted him. He sent soldiers to kill all the boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under. Because the wise men had told him the star first appeared to them about two years earlier, Herod's brutal action fulfilled the prophecy of Jeremiah. A cry of anguish is heard in Ramah, weeping and mourning unrestrained. Rachel weeps for her children, refusing to be comforted for they are dead. Sometimes the lessons that we learn in life are from other people's mistakes. This morning we're going to learn that Herod didn't even bother to celebrate the good news. He tried to survive Christmas by doing things his own way. Herod shows us that there are some things that we need to let go. And the first thing that Herod needed to let go of was... We, we have this rule in our house that when it comes to watching Christmas movies, that we all need to take a turn. If we didn't, we would end up watching Hallmark movies, or Frosty the Snowman, or Rudolph. 
There's just only so many times that you can watch Frosty and cry through a Hallmark movie. The power of the Christmas specials must be shared. A group of traveling wise men, they, they show up in Jerusalem and they would have had a large entourage of people with them. They definitely would have stood out. People would have known, wow, there's something different about them. Wonder why they're in Jerusalem. And the, it gets back to King Herod that they're on this, this mission. We are looking for the newborn king of the Jews. What? What, what did you say? King? King? Herod. Herod is the king. No one else. Well, technically, the Romans made Herod king. See, at this point now, Jerusalem would have been in a panic. You would have thought, wow, there's when something new comes into your town, you want to check it out. You want to see what's so exciting. But this would have driven them to panic as soon as they heard that they were looking for a newborn king. The people would have been scared that if I say that this, there's another king that Herod is going to have me executed. The Romans would have been questioning them. Saying, what, what is this? No, no. We have appointed Herod as the king. He is the only king. This would have caused panic and confusion and terror in the people in Jerusalem. Matthew 2 verse 3 says that when Herod heard their question that he was deeply disturbed. What's your response to the statement that Jesus needs to be the king of your life. Are you like Herod? Are you deeply disturbed? Does it cause you to be angry? Do you get mad? Are you in denial? Do you reject this? Or does it give you a sense of love, of joy? Do you say, I desire to worship this king? C.S. Lewis said this quote, Once in our world, a stable had something in it that was bigger than our whole world. See, Herod, he just couldn't fathom the fact that someone could be more powerful than him. A king above all other kings? That's inconceivable. I am the king. No one can be greater than me. But in your life, what power do you need to let go? What power do you need to surrender to the king of all kings? Is it decisions that you have to make? You think that you, you make the right decisions? Maybe it's direction. You feel that you have the best direction for your life. You don't need anybody telling you what to do. Or maybe it's fixing your marriage. You're like, I've got it. I will fix this marriage. Your trouble with... Parenting. No, I can. I will parent my kids. I don't need anybody helping me to raise my kids. Or maybe it's this COVID-19. You think, I'll just ride out the storm. I'm fine. Or maybe you're, you're stuck in a valley. You've got yourself in trouble and you think, I will get myself out. Or maybe you're up on the mountaintop. Everything is great. And you're thinking, I'm the one that got me there. There's power in each and one of us that we need to surrender to the king of kings. The second thing that Herod needed to let go of was... Unbelief! College basketball coach John Wooden said this quote, It's what you learn after you know it all that really counts. See, Herod at this point now, he is consulting with his experts. The chief priests and the scribes. The scribes would have been those that were teachers or experts in understanding the Old Testament. And they quoted to Herod Micah 5 verse 2. O Bethlehem of Judah, you are not just a lowly village in Judah, for a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. 
Bethlehem was approximately about a two-hour walk from Jerusalem. Herod knew exactly where Jesus was and could have made the journey. Instead, he chooses to send the wise men. Herod could have made that journey, but he chose not to. And see, friends, you can have all the facts about who Jesus is. You can read your Bible. You can even go to church. But when it comes right down to it, you need to choose to believe. Herod had all the facts. He had all the information he needed. He had all the head knowledge, but chose not to believe. He knew everything. He knew the Old Testament, and he knew exactly where Jesus was, but he just couldn't make the journey. He wasn't willing to put his belief in this, in Jesus, the Savior and Shepherd of Israel. He chose not to go and experience the wonder of the nativity story. And because of his ego, because of his pride, he couldn't let go of his unbelief and believe in his heart that Jesus is who the prophet spoke about. We need to take it from our head, not just have all the facts, but we need to make a heart decision and put our full trust and belief in Jesus, who is the Savior and Shepherd of us, His people. And the third thing that Herod needed to let go of was his... His anger! Herod now, at this point in the story, is feeling betrayed. He's feeling tricked. He feels that nobody respects him. He has now officially lost all control and becomes furious. And he says in Matthew 2 verse 16, he tells his soldiers to go to Bethlehem and to kill any boys that are two years and younger. And maybe you're thinking to yourself, this is outrageous. How can they be including this in the nativity story? When I buy my nativity set, there's never a Herod that's included. It's because sometimes at Christmas, we are confronted with the one thing that gets you furious. I am confronted oftentimes at Christmas by the things that make me furious. Maybe there's, there's a hurt that you have experienced. There's, there's wounds, there's, there's disappointments. You're feeling right now that all of your plans have completely changed. And let's be honest, you're pretty ticked off. You're furious right now. And guess what? All the Merry Christmases in the world are not going to help you let, let go of that what makes you angry until you surrender it to God. Herod just couldn't let go of his anger. He couldn't, and he tried to destroy the one person in the world who could give him peace, who could give him joy, who could give him restoration, mercy, and forgiveness. He was trying to destroy that person. And for you out there, if you are feeling angry, if, if Merry Christmas just gets you going, gets your blood boiled, and gets you so furious, or maybe it's not just Christmas, maybe it's every other day, you struggle with anger. And if we were to talk to the, the people that love you the most that are around you, they would say, yes, you have an anger problem. Don't let it destroy you. Don't turn your back on the one that can give you true peace and true joy. Turn 
to Jesus and surrender that anger. See, this Christmas season, I want you to do more than just merely survive. For some of this, that you mean you need to let go of some things. You need to surrender power. You need to acknowledge Jesus as the king of your life. You need to let go of that unbelief and move from head knowledge and believe in your heart. And for some of you, you need to let go of that anger. You need to let go of the things that are holding on to you that make you so furious. There's a song that's written by Chris Tomlin called Christmas Day. And the first verse of this song says, Joy to the world on the night like no other. Emmanuel, God is with us. Beggars and kings, let us come and adore him. Rest in his peace and bow before him. Herod didn't experience joy. He certainly didn't have peace and he certainly did not choose to come and bow before the king of kings. Amy now is going to come and sing this beautiful song for us called Christmas Day.
Thank you so much, Amy, for, for singing that beautiful song, Christmas Day. I pray that it reminded you just exactly what Christmas is all about. I pray that it, it helped you to let go of some of those things that are keeping you from experiencing Jesus, the true reason for Christmas. Now to us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. 